Hi folks, welcome to a wet and windy and miserable episode of The Restoration Couple. Uh, today I'm going to show you how we've got this lock and handle all fitted to our door and the final few touches that we've got done on our faceboards and some of the joinery. So stick around and I'll show you how we got on. So we're getting to the point now where we need to be able to lock a door and the first thing I needed to do was to secure the door in place. After working out the height I wanted the lock it was time to mark up the size of the actual casing that we'd need to be mortising into the door. So once I'd done that I realised that we've already spent our time pre-finishing these doors, getting them all nice so it's probably best to protect it with a bit of tape and then we'd make our markings and drill within that area. So you can see I've done the height and then I worked out the centre point of the door and marked that as the central line all the way down. I then took a drill bit that was going to be able to house the case width and decided I think it was 16 or 18 millimetres and then did a series of holes down that centre line to drill out our mortise. Then just neatened a line all the way down so that we'd have something to chisel to to square it all off. Now you would have noticed that when I was drilling I'd already set the depth of our drill by putting a bit of tape on the shank of the drill bit because obviously you don't want to drill too deep, especially if it's a glazed door like this. But once you've already got the depth sorted, you're basically just squaring it up and getting it ready to house the lock. Now it doesn't matter if you've got a bit of side to side movement, because you, what you want to do is be able to level up and straighten that lock so it's perfectly centered in the door. And after a little bit more work, I got that to a point where I was happy, I could remove the tape, and now we'd need to mark up where we're going to chisel out the depth of the faceplate. So again I centred it all up, marked the sides which are the same on both pieces and then squared off the top and bottom. Now then the next bit to chisel out is only to the depth of those two pieces together which is only a few millimetres and you want to get this bit right so it's better to creep up on the depth rather than go too deep to start with. This bit you could definitely do with a handheld router, set the right depth and then you should be all good. Uh, but this time of night I was keen to just do it by hand, a bit quieter. Another coffee later and we're on to getting the holes drilled for the key and the handle spindle. So once I've got the lock in place, I need to then take it out again, hold it up to the side, remembering to account for both the lock itself and that plate. Get those flush and then I could mark in there those two holes that need drilling. And I marked this on both sides because I wanted to drill in from both sides. That was going to give me a better finish and less chance of any tear out on the wood. A bit more of a clean out, then I can check everything's working and nothing is rubbing on the wood. And then just the two screws to install the lock in place. Next job is to close the door with the lockout against the door frame and that will allow us to mark onto the door frame where that lock needs to be housed. The key part of the lock is what needs to go in next and we just want to make sure that what we've marked on there already from the lock itself is going to sit inside this. And then again finding the right size drill bit, a series of holes to get that housed in. Now wait for it. This is why forcing a bit late night and not enough coffee, or too much coffee, is a bad thing. 
after a little strop with myself, I realised that actually this would all be hidden because we've got to chisel all that area out anyway. But yeah, that could have gone could have gone wrong. One little hang up I had was with the keep, you can see where the metal is folded on a curve there and where it's welded. You need to take the edge off that mortise in the frame to make sure that's housed in, otherwise it'll stand proud. That took me a little while to work that bit out. But once it's in, then you can go ahead and tap it home and drill. There's two slotted holes. If you drill those first, put a screw in the, at those and then you've got a bit of side to side movement and adjustment to make sure that when your door shuts that it's uh, being held at the right point and it's not too hard or too easy to close. After a little bit of fiddling we got it just right. Right, we're now at a point where we can get our handle fitted. The lock's in place and I've just been using a multi-tool for now to get in and out. You'll notice in our late night escapades getting this lock fitted, uh, my, my hole was probably 3 mil off. Um, I've measured without the faceplate, I think. So I've just chiselled it square and that means that there's no chance of it hitting. It probably would have been okay anyway, but the last thing you want is this rubbing at all on the wood. Typical, it's been raining non-stop since I pressed record on the camera. Right, I've, what I've done is just gone in with a chisel and just clear, had to clear up a little bit more. While the actual mechanism and spindle can go through fine, this sort of the bulky part of the handle here also has to sit in the hole slightly. So I had to enlarge the hole a little bit because I didn't want that catching on the wood. This part was really quite straightforward sat the handles on both sides, made sure they were lined up and also checked the key was able to move in freely. Uh, I then took a ruler as well just to make sure that we were equal on both sides. Now after a good play around testing it and making sure that everything was freely moving then I could put in the remaining screws and that was it. And remember folks, line those screws up whether you're a horizontal person or a vertical slotted person, get them all matching. Now as we were on a bit of a roll that day I decided to carry on in the evening and get the all the joinery on the inside prepped, sanded and finished. I've gone ahead with the same Osmo UV oil that we used on the external surfaces, use that inside as well so everything matches and is tied in together. If everything was just internal then PolyX oil clear would be just the same and it really does pull it all in together. So here's a few last shots of that and we'll go into a bit more detail on how I'm going about finishing the inside. Uh, fit out in the next few videos. So there we go, not the hardest of jobs to do but one that does take time to get right because it's the, the last thing you want is a, a handle that doesn't work properly or jams or is too stiff. Um, but anyway, another job ticked off. And of course there are jigs available whether you make your own or buy one if you had an endless amount of these to fit, whether it's internal doors or external. The one last thing to mention is I've taken off the, the weather seal from this door so I could get the finish done and it wouldn't stick. Um, but when that is in, it's 
now in the right position so it snugs up nicely and it's completely sealed. Now I've given myself an optimistic deadline of the end of this month to get all of this building completed and the garage conversion uh, just because there's so many other projects I want to move on to and I'm going to say strong and finish what I started for once. But anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.